Now, I'm, I'm sorry. It's taken me a while, Govind, to get in well, why we're here today. All right. Well, the last week has been, you know, with the dead cops and all the stuff and, and, and the RNC and all the things. We, we almost did a early 20 on 20 a couple of days ago because it just seemed so the day is so dark. And the events that are happening are so kind of like contractions. I mean, they're happening closer and closer together. So what's the what 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 are, what are we going to? Is, is it going to birth World War Three? You know, there's there's people are very upset and very upset with Obama. You know, and they as well they should be, since he's calling for cop killings. You know, he's calling for cop killings. I mean, mm-hmm. to to be to have a president call for the killing of cops, and then have the killings take place, and then have him out playing golf. And, you know, basically celebrating I that's beyond any I have no ability to comprehend that. I don't have any ability to comprehend why he is not in jail, why there's not a coup. De, then then to, to, to top it off. Uh, he calls Erdogan, you know, the turkey, the, the turkey man. He OK, Erdogan, Erdogan, whatever he is. But he, he calls the guy. <laughs> And he, and he, and listen, he calls him and, and he, and he says, the United States is behind you. No, I am not behind him. No, uh, you it's just one dictator to another is all it is. One despot to another, one evil man to another, one Satanist to another. And I'm sick of it. Well, I can't thing, stand it another day. The, the, the thing is, is that these guys, they're, they're having to scramble more and more these days i mean so yeah. You, yeah. you've got you've got places where um things are not going sort of according to plan so they're doing more and more of a mad dash to try to get things in place and to try to get their way um so i mean so you've got the incident in turkey taking place you got brexit that's going on you have yeah um every time that they turn around information that they've about things these guys have done in the seventies is starting to come out and mm-hmm. um, be be plastered everywhere, and they're just trying to keep the news cycle so stirred up and people away from talking about and having a conversation about any of the things that are uh, just matter of fact who they are and yeah. what they're doing. Yeah, you, you start talking about dead cops in Dallas. The next thing you know, some madman runs over a bunch of people in Nice, France, and then the police cover that up. They arrest six people, and then you don't find out. Anything else? And oh yes, and people say, "Oh, I, you know, I looked into the false flag aspect." And yes, it it's like a lot of these things; they're all a blend. We start with Dallas with several gunmen. Now we're down to the lone gunman. We start with three, then we get down to two in Baton Rouge. Then we get down to one again. Same thing that happened in Nice. We get that we have multiple suspects. Now we get down to one. We never find out who provided the this that or the truck or anything else. They they provide a narrative, so they're just dishonest. You know, the press, the CIA, the FBI, they're all well, I, everyone I, I, lying. I, I, yeah, I don't take the I don't take the press um, seriously on most of the stuff because right. they've got an awful track record on on anything to do with honesty. And by and large, as history has been proven out over time, when when people have gone back and looked at things, they say, oh, wait a second. You know, they've how many times have they lied, manipulated, cajoled? The public all over the world, all over the world. Yeah, no, they're all coordinated. Uh, now I'm getting the idea that these are all coordinated, whether it's in Nice, France, or Dallas, te- Texas, you know, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, it doesn't matter. It, it seems to all be, you know, if it happens up in Michigan, uh, you know, and then and then now Twitter is cracked down. Uh, apparently, uh, you know, the, the media star Milo, the dangerous faggot. Um, we like Milo, by the way, <laughs> but he calls himself the dangerous <laughs> faggot. Anyway. What I love about Milo is this. I don't know if you follow him, Milo Yiannopoulos. He's, uh, he, he's, he's hilarious. He's at Nero, by the way, if you want to check him out. Uh, well, he used to be. He's, uh, he was banned from Twitter for life last night, right before the party of gays having a party for Trump. And see, the thing that I've been giving a little thought to Milo, why he's popular, it, 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 it amongst, um, you know, why he's such a... Uh, uh, a barn burner if you will it's because you know the the gays are supposed to be in line with the left absolutely and owned and operated by and the fact that one got away and he's organizing others to arm themselves to stand up for the second amendment to vote for trump whatever to try to 
you know, keep be a sovereign USA, right? Rather than a, a USA hater to burn it all down. And they just can't stand it when, when, a, when a guy like that breaks from the plantation, from the slave plantation oh, of the ab- left. Absolutely, absolutely. No, that, that absolutely. He, the, the issue that they have with somebody my, like Milo is that, see, they, 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 the, the goal of the world is to break everybody up into these little compartmentalized cells where basically now they know everything that you're going to do from cradle to grave. And you have zero free thought. You have zero um, anything that comes from you. And you basically, once you're in that little box, you do what you're told. So so for somebody like Milo who comes up and basically he's just like, okay, this is who he is uh, as a person. This is his thought process. And and he's just like, I'm just going to be up there and do what I'm going to do and let the world deal with it. And they can't because the problem is is that they they can't (laughs) because he melts down their programming. Because on one side, right. they're, they're, he's 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 supposed to um, he's supposed to be a certain way if right. he's you know the homophobic white yeah. male, and yeah, but he's, but he's, but here he is being gay and, it, and and then being conservative or hanging out in in circles that you know you would that that we you know there's an us and them that we're involved in. Uh, because we're trying to you know not just get the country back, but we're it's look. It's well, a and, war. And also, Go yeah, ahead. So Finish your yeah, thoughts. So he's Sorry. Intelligent. Also, he's intelligent. Very, and very. So he says when when his his discussions are logical, they're factual. They're right. They're they're actually substance based. So they're not just a bunch of um, careless, lazy memes. Like most of the things no. that I hear that are out there <laughs> yeah. that that people throw around, they're 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 baseless. So the 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 thing that you end up with with somebody like Milo is he's just challenging the thought process. For a lot of people that really don't have a response, and so you see, um, with the the totalitarian state push, what they're trying to do now with something like Twitter is they just say, "Well, we can't deal with this." They just ban them, shut them off. Yeah, exactly. They just shut them off for life. I mean, that's unheard of. That is more than a shot across the bow, friends. That right there is, uh, and I expect the next. You know, there'll be others too to follow, but that right there is actual. Uh, a, a war, you know, that's war. Okay. And, but see, so here's the thing, we're at war now. Is that in this, in this, in, in this world, the, the, on one side, okay. So Twitter is a private company. Facebook is a private company. These are, these are, these groups, even all these media outlets, these are businesses. So all these guys, they've all gone in and in that way. And they've tried to get a ton of people using and adapting their service. In the end, what they're going to do by banning voices, by destroying free speech, is people are going to continue to move to and shift to and look at other platforms where mm-hmm. their rights are going to be respected. So That's where I'm I going. Mean, yeah, I mean, so, that's so a, I'm, I'm out, you know. So, so people are looking for viable, credible alternatives, and that's the thing that they can't have. See, they don't want people to, to actually say, okay— um, because you, you can't you can't block the free flow of information. Ultimately, you can't block the light and the truth that's coming in as well. So what, what nope. they're doing in the, in the short run, they feel like, oh, okay, we're just going to block this person's voice. I mean, come on, Twitter. Twitter has not been profitable ever as a business. I mean, it's it's you know it's uh-huh. a it's a great idea and a great platform, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff that's coming out right now, and people are yeah. coming up with new ideas and adopting well. Them. With them very quickly. Yeah, wherever Milo is going to go, he's going to take millions of people with him. That's oh, that's yeah. that's how popular he is. And well, okay, so there's that front. Then another front, Govinda, is at Fox News, which has been around like the only kind of you know what you might call conservative or libertarian type of voice. Not everybody there, but you know you do get some people that have common sense, which is unusual in news. And um you know the 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 head of that, the the genius behind it all, because they were they were number one rated for so long. Roger Ailes was set up. What happened is that Gretchen Carlson, a former Miss America, and uh, you know, beautiful woman. Um, you, you know, not, I wouldn't say a knockout completely, but I mean, I'm not here to criticize anybody. <laughs> you know, but but you know, just another pretty blonde woman on Fox, which has seemed to be a lot of them, and very smart. You know, very, uh, very good communicator, but her show didn't get the ratings despite her background. And she just came out with a book and, you know, she had everything kind of going for her. 
but it you know her career um you know took a dive in terms of uh, viewership so roger ailes uh moved to to you know uh fire her basic based on the ratings okay and then so then she retaliated by bringing a sexual assault charge on roger ailes which you know, and I understand we're not to block out the women that have this, but why couldn't she have brought it earlier? It's, the hypocritical thing is that she didn't mention it until she was fired. If she was really concerned about sexual harassment, she would have brought that up uh, while she was still employed and taken the risk of maybe losing her job. But she didn't do it that way. She waited till after she was fired, and then she brought the suit and the investigation and the shame on Roger Ailes. And um, the you see... You have to understand the bigger picture, Govinda. I mean, I know you do, but we're going to ex- explain this to them. The bigger picture is they wanted him out anyway, okay? They used Gretchen Carlson. Let me give you the kind of conspiratorial view of this, of what I actually believe happened. They used her to bring that charge against Dales because they wanted, that's the, 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 uh, the brothers, the two, the, the Murdoch brothers, okay? The Murdoch boys, okay? They're, they're, the, they're the sons under Rupert Murdoch who are running... Fox and Hollywood, all right? The movies and te- television. Okay, so the Murdoch boys wanted Ailes out. Basically, mm-hmm. they get Carlson to launch her, her claim. They also got Megan Kelly to stab Ailes in the back, and Ailes was the one that made her a star. And then, uh, and so Roger, uh, it, you know, is out. And at the same time, Roger is out at Fox, which is huge because Fox was the only one. I mean, say what you will about how corrupt they are. And I yell and scream at people on Fox all the time, you know, just not happy with. But they're better than, you know, they're better than all the rest of them. And they have the ratings to show for it. So they, they're, they're, he, le- he was booted out last night along with Milo Band from Twitter at the same moment where, um, where you know, right before the party for Trump for, for Milo and right before, uh, right at the height of Fox's ratings during the convention, which is the highest ratings. And then. You know, I guess the only higher ratings there would be is when Trump finally debates Hillary Clinton. That would be quite the ratings. But anyway, he's out. And now there's a controversy whether people are going to follow him or they're going to stay there. And it's a big drama right now. All of this is coming from the left. And also the Murdoch boys. I know, Trish, I'm going to say this. The Murdoch boys want to take the show left. All of Fox News left like CNN. And they don't care if there's viewers or not. They're making money hand over fist in television and movies. They just want to turn off the opposition. Mm-hmm. That's why they got Gretchen Carlson to do that. They did it to her. They manipulated her. And they manipulated Megyn Kelly into giving a deposition and an affidavit where she states that one time, 10 years ago, Roger hugged her inappropriately. Give me a break. They needed one more witness to make it credible so they could let him go. Now, I'm not a big fan of Roger Ailes, like his private life. I don't know whether, you know, you know, whether he's a blood-drinking Satanist or whatever he is. I don't care. It's, like, it's kind of like the enemy of my enemy <laughs> is my friend, right? So, you know, but I appreciate what Roger has done with the show, with Fox News, with the ratings, with, with, with tapping into that, that you know, the, the, the fact that there are people out there who think like we do, in a way, you know, and who aren't. I, I, so, yeah, you know, the, the thing that's interesting with all of this stuff taking taking place is, again, it's another manifestation of them, of the, the controllers losing control. And so right. what they're basically what so all of these things. So banning Milo's voice on Twitter, um, the, the need for them to try to get rid of Roger Ailes, who, you know, I, I'm sure that he's been. You know, he's probably played ball where he's needed to over time, but they, they probably think that this is still not good enough because they're they're losing control of the narrative. Yeah. I mean, CNN is dying in bed. MSNBC. I mean, even Obama was makes fun of them. I mean, so it's just like, yeah. you know, when 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 uh, I mean, he's even making fun of the fact that they have no viewers. So uh, so what's happening is unless these groups are being propped up by their corporate interests, there, there's there, the world has moved on and is continuing to move on. So, um, you know, I, 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 I have uh, I have friends that are journalists um, here in, in in the U.S. as well that are, are are, I mean, they have far more viewership than a lot of these people have. And so, I mean, I, one of the recent conversations too that I had with one of them was along the lines that I mean, CNN will show up with their big trucks. 
you know, at these mm-hmm. events. Yeah. And it's just more for staging purposes. It's just more to kind of say, oh, okay, well, here we are with the news truck and the big antenna on the top, and and so here's CNN. Yeah. But these guys mm-hmm. are laughing because the the actual journalists that are there, they're streaming stuff on their phones, and they've got. Uh, I mean, millions of viewers that are checking in and going as far as content goes, as far as information. Yeah, goes, yeah, it's going to be it, it, right. It's it's hard to it's hard to get paid. I mean, it, uh, these days when you can just stream the news, what do you need the truck for? You don't need the truck. That's the point. So the point is, is that is that it's coming down to people saying, okay, we don't need the window dressing anymore. What's actually going on? Right. And so then what what happens with with somebody like Milo that stands up and and is making very good, very strong points right. is that and which they don't have a rebuttal for. They actually don't have a logical piece. So what they do is they need to get as loud as they possibly can and try to shout down the people that are actually making sense. And Mm -hmm. so when they can't do that, and they're 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 afraid that people are waking up, or people are responding, or people are are leaving, or people are 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 actioning those messages. Then what they're trying to do now, and this is really a desperate attempt of a of a weak-minded person, is just to remove that voice. But the problem is, I mean, the very nature of the internet was designed to keep things from being able to be removed. So so things can reroute. They can go another way. If people want certain information. Yeah, they, I, can, they can get it. It's going to happen with with ales and, and and I look at it as now. Let me show the positive side of this. Okay, so they made this desperate move, which also proves, folks, that they are losing exactly the war. They are losing. So now, when I say we're at war, I mean we're in the messy stage where, you know, like I say, cops are being gunned down, people are being fired. You know, stuff stuff is happening in the war. Right? It's not an overt war yet. It's not a civil war yet. But it is basically people getting shot right and left and things happening because why? The reason people are getting shot is because they're losing ground and they're desperate. So now they're calling for they have to ramp it up to the next level. The, the instinct they have is, is very reptilian in the sense of spiritually speaking, because all they know how to do is quash it. You know, shut it down. You know, you hear Black Lives Matter. We're going to shut it down. That's all they know how to do. They can't argue. They can't talk. And they can't argue in the, in the, um, you know, in the uh, theater of ideas. They can't. They can't. They can't debate. They can't. All they could do is be authoritarian and issue their edicts of shut it down. That's all they know how to do when they're frightened. Obviously, Black Lives Matter is a George Soros movement, so it's a political movement using um in this case black people as a tool or trying to get as many involved as possible and i don't think and i think people are seeing through it you know because it's it's not not that much different from occupy wall street it's the same people it's the same group in fact i saw them trying to block a car for the black lives matter rally and it was half white people and these white people are the, the people you see with the occupy wall street again another george soros front and the reason that they all these fronts exist is because they're trying to use them to overthrow the system so they can grab power. Well, it's not working. No, it's not working. People and, are driving their cars through those blocks now. They're not waiting well, anymore. They're just well, driving and, through. And the other thing, too, Zeph, is that most of these people are not that are, are doing this stuff. These are weekend warriors. So when when. I mean, they're they're not used to. Uh, I mean, good point. There's there's other countries where where you've got people lighting themselves on fire in protests. You've got other countries where people fast unto death. I mean, none of these people are like that. They're they're as no. soon as they get hungry, they're going to break the picket line and go get something to eat and and uh, try to check things on and and put up a hashtag. So you know, these are not people that are a lot of them are not true believers they've got some of them in there but these are these are people look, searching and scraping for meaning now here's the other thing too there are some real issues that are there you know in this country and and this and this is where people are being taken for a ride is they is they take some of these real issues that are there that that have been there there have been issues and in right no i agree agree but they're bridge they're bridging people from those and trying to control the response again that hegelian dialectic they're trying to say okay problem reaction solution so here's a problem they're trying to control the reaction by again the media spin and the control of the information and the control of the perception and then giving people an a b 
um, response that, that either one of them plays into their hand. And I think the problem for me, and I think the problem for a lot of other people is that's sh so shop worn at this stage. It's so just, just old. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's played out. And at this point right now, for me, it's boring because they, yeah. they've lacked any creativity. They've lacked any of the response. Uh, I mean, even even things like like Facebook, for example, I keep I keep telling uh, friends and people that we have a discussion with Facebook is two technological innovations away from being obsolete. And, and so a lot of these things that are sort of the mainstays of their power right now and really what they're building everything around. These are, are they're, 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 they're good for them until they're not. There's going to be a window at a moment in time where a lot of these things are, are just not going to work anymore. Uh, I mean, sorry, yeah. we're having technical difficulties here. With apparently the wire is not is now gone kaput, and we've lost Govinda. So sorry, um, I spent a lot of money on this. Well, I know you're tired of hearing that. But. Okay, try that. Are you there? Okay, am I there? You're there. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the wire malfunctioned because. Maybe one of you want to volunteer to send me. All I have to do is go on, go online and order a wire. I mean, it's no big deal, you know. But uh, uh, sorry for that interruption. I'm. The, you see, the problem is, is that I can't get a clear. I'm trying to throw the wire. No, you see. Okay, it's doing it again, and I'm. I'm trying to get the wire away from the other ones. And, you know, it's, uh, I'm living with a, I keep saying that I'm going to fix this situation. Oh boy. And, you know, and, and it's, uh, it's a dire situation. And what's happening here is it's beginning to crack here on the edge. No, he's there. Yeah. He's there. Um, I think we've got to have well, it. Next week we'll have, I'll, I'll get it fixed. I, you know, it's just. It's just one of those things that I can't get my mind around. Uh, I just I just don't want to accept that there's a malfunction, I guess. So I keep using it. But anyway, I, I, where we were, where were we uh, before we were so rudely interrupted? Zeph, Zeph, that, that wire might be a great metaphor for the way the world is trying to relate to this situation right now. They can't accept that there's a malfunction. They want to try to get it fixed, but it's not going to work. It's not. I have to get a new wire, I, I, yeah, or a exactly. soldering iron, and and get in there and and resolder it, and that's another possibility. How about a little electrical tape. Uh, electrical tape won't help you. That's like you know when you when you're in a war and you pray, you have to then pick your gun up afterwards. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I hate to you know that's another thing we have to tell. Look, just leave it alone. I have it set so that if. Keep the dog, everybody out of here. Okay, folks, sorry for the lack of professionalism, but I have no standard that I have to live up to. The main thing here is just the real information, you know? Yeah. No, I, I, I love the fact that when we do these things, we're, we have everybody in the kitchen with us. Um, you know, <laughs> it's, it's oh. been like this, I think, from, from the start for, for um, with Faith Mix as well and just like i i love it because it's just like i i think i like going live on the phone that i have a phone and i can start streaming live anywhere i am and the fact that yeah. i that that's a whole studio on a phone and where i can cue music and 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 breaks or whatever i want to do and uh it, it's it's quite extraordinary that you know yeah. and with a laptop you can actually without any hookups at all i had you coming in we prayed last time we had a Brexit session, remember? Mm -hmm. And that was pretty cool. And uh, Brexit, and, and, Brexit is, they're trying to slow it down, but they, you know, here's another thing. They want to get it back the way it was and they can't. Yeah, yeah. Well, well I mean, Zeph, think, think about, you know, when, when you started broadcasting, what, 15 years ago? And oh. I mean, the, the level of, of equipment and, and help and support that, that you needed yep. at the time to be able to get a message out. I mean, you know, yesterday I, I was just, yeah, you know, it's just kind of, I noticed that Alex Jones had gone live. So I just was curious. And I saw the whole, um, where he was attacked by a bunch of communists. 
<laughs> I mean, like, I mean, it was, it was, it's amazing that that right now where we live at, as far as timing goes, you can. I mean, I have friends that stream live from Sri Lanka, and if I'm if I see it, you know, I can I can tap into their their. Yeah, there's stream. a lot more people doing it, which is fantastic. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, so 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 right now, what's happening? I love that. Is, is the the innovations, the level of innovations, the voices that are coming out there, the expressions that are coming out there, they they can't stop that part. So right now, what they're trying to do is they're trying to, um, as you would say, double down on the system that they've had. They're they're pulling in the good old boys network, um, and then the recent good old boys, which are the 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 Googles and the Facebooks, were basically the conversation they would have had with those guys is. Do you want to be rich or do you want to be dead? And all Mm -hmm. those guys said they want to be rich. Um, So they all are playing ball with the uh, intelligence gathering mind control agenda. But in the middle of that, it's not working because they they what they have is they have the real numbers, the real information. And with that real information that they have, they see that they're losing the 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 control of the narrative that they're losing the control of the perception and that the things that they're doing are having less and less and less of an effect okay for uh, i'll give you a, an example of one thing in sri lanka too so sri lanka had um you know we had a terrible civil war um for uh, pretty much three decades wow. and in the process too you know we had we had um we had the the most suicide bombings in the world uh, happened in Sri Lanka between from 1980 to 2000. So in in on record officially um, at that time, there was 168 suicide bombers between 1968 to 2000. And the next closest was Hezbollah with 52. So, you know, and so it, and then just dropped off very, very steep after that. Now, it's become a very normal practice in a lot of the world this stage of people using that kind of thing but this was really where that kind of tactic was used extensively and perfected now one thing that happened there was as people continued to go forward and they kept being exposed to you know not just that but just a lot of other regular and consistent violence in the country there there was a desensitization that took place to the population there were certain kinds of things that people would see that they just eventually they would just kind of steer their car around. They would just sort of like, okay, they would go a different way to get to work. They would, they would, they would check to see, okay, are their friends and family okay? Um, how is this going to affect them? And then they would just carry on with whatever they were doing because people started, kept looking for how to function in the middle of that. And people can start finding ways to they they adjust in the middle of these situations. So now what's happening? here is even with the different things that are coming up is that they're not having the type of effect that they're wanting because a lot Mm -hmm. of people it's 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 losing their shock value so they're they're trying to do more and more uh things and and then also the worlders they just realize that they're not in control and they're scared but so they're trying to find other places to put their attention and their focus Uh, so so they're it's starting to have unintended effects and they're trying to figure out how do they control this narrative and make people still do what they want to. They can't. So people, are, people are punch drunk in a way. You know, that's another thing, too, where it's sort of like, OK, how many more crazy scenarios do they want people to, to have or to see? Uh, but it's still not having the desired effect to be able it's, to push people towards their agenda. It's the law of diminishing returns. In other words, they yes. keep doing the same things and they keep pulling the same false flag terror, the same the same narratives, and then they control the, the information after the event. And so I'm convinced that, that most of these people are involved in it in some way or another, you know, whether it be uh, fake shootings like the, the Umqua thing or, or Sandy Hook or even the more, you know, which the, all the media had to be involved in that. In fact, uh, who they're all getting sued for a trillion dollars right now, and uh, that's going forth. The, the, the Brexit thing is happening. The uh, people are so fed up now with Obama and Hillary and that whole thing. They're in droves breaking for Trump. Uh, anything to push back this globalist, authoritarian, kleptocratic, leftist, whatever you want to call it, New World Order thing. People have had it. They've had they booed. They booed Mitch McConnell. See, they know the difference now between uh, a traitor globalist, Mitch McConnell, 
and um, a, a, a populist like Trump or, or, or a nationalist like Trump, they know the difference between the two now, which they didn't know a few years ago. And so now they're, they're, people are demanding you know, to have a country. They're demanding to have borders. They're demanding to have the rule of law. People that might have been on the fence before about what they thought about law enforcement versus that. No, they want law enforcement. They want law and order. They want uh, an economy. They don't want the, uh, to have all their jobs and all the factories outsourced. They want to have, be able to make a living right here at home and be able to make a decent wage. And that's another issue that you were talking about, whether it's all Occupy Wall Street has to do with the inequality and the, and the, the, the wage stag- stagnation. And the other thing is, is the racial uh, issues where, you know, we have, uh, well, it's all changing well, uh, demographically, well, uh, but you have, you know, racism uh, has been, it's true. There is racism out there. Yes. And there is prejudice out there. And, you know, if you're a lamb, I mean, you know, then you have the ultimate because every you're, you're, you're not put to the back of the bus. You're kicked off the bus. So, so. <laughs> well, well, so, so the thing, the thing that, that people sometimes too, even if they if they actually will just stop and think for a minute, they 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 start to put possibly realize that that with these issues that these are not mutually exclusive points of view no. i mean people people can can support um the 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 fair treatment of everybody based on their humanity and also support having a functional legal and justice system in this country people can support both simultaneously mm-hmm. they're not mutually exclusive you know right I, and just, i agree wait, wait yeah. i just want to interject this i agree with policing of cops I agree that the Albuquerque, the Albuquerque thing when they shot the homeless guy on the on the hill down here in Sandia, which is just right down the street from us. Uh, yeah, um, I had, you, you know, a big problem with that. They were joking around. And they shot the guy in cold blood. Yeah. That was horrible. They should be, you know, in trouble for that. But you know what? It's a corrupt city, Albuquerque. We're in a corrupt situation and, and you know, there's a there's a fight within the police department. So it's a good thing that the corruption in the police has been brought up. But now but but to make it, it put it in a bigger part in the bigger tent of global communism, you know, and so therefore kill the cops see that's then throwing the baby out with the bathwater if you will that's well yeah and and see that that's that's the that's the larger way that they try to push these situations that take place along a particular line to control the narrative and the agenda and to polarize people so for example what i found too is in most issues that are there that people have been divided on if people would actually stop and and spend a little bit of time saying what is it that they ultimately want to get down to they probably want the same things they're just coming at it from two different vantage points as far as the people go the general people not the controllers that are there that are trying to just manipulate right. uh, the individual right so, I understand. But if you, if, so for example say something like the vaccine debate okay let's just talk about that one just for a second well in actuality what do people probably want they probably want Uh, a healthy population they probably want their kids to be healthy and safe they probably want uh to to avoid unnecessary diseases that's probably where they're coming from as far as most people and but and then people get very um up in arms about something like that but then at the same time too they 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 have a particular mindset and a particular way that they the narrative that they've been sold now on one side I, I would love to see safe vaccines, but what have I seen? I've seen from some of my experience overseas and some of my experience in the development world, I've seen um, animals be vaccine, vaccinated for something and then die of that same disease that they were vaccinated for six months ago. I've seen um, I've, I've seen all kinds of uh, awful things in the health industry where where medicines are dumped um, and, and expired meds are dumped and populations are are. Yeah. very badly affected by that so i have a question i have i have a concern i have something that i would love to to air and have in the discussion because of you know my experience with with some things internationally as well as locally so i i and i have questions about the medical industrial complex that are there where people are seen as profit centers and the desire is not to have people healthy because you can't make money off of a person that's healthy or dead because you can't make money off of a person that's dead but what they want is to have people 
in that moderate sick level where they can keep extracting them from them and get them to pay. And the public awareness of that has gone up, up, up so that we have, you know, we, we have the banning of GMO foods. Now we have, you know, the, 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 the controversy about vaccines very much in the public discourse now, where it didn't used to be. All these things are coming to light well, too. Yes. And so, so, but what happens is what we see is that if people would actually stop and have a conversation about the real substantive, substantive issue, they would actually find that they're probably on the same page for a lot of things. But what, what, right. what the issue, what, what the, the controllers have done, and this is, a, is, is historically has been a brilliant strategy that may or may not be working for them as well these days, but is that issue of divide and conquer. Right. And we've talked about this before on your show. At one point at the height of the British Empire, uh, they controlled a nation of India with a billion people. They controlled with 3,000 troops. So they don't need much resource in place in order to be able to control the people if they can control their perception, if they can get people fighting against each other, and what they do is they extract then anything of value from a nation. So, mm-hmm. so the way that this whole thing works is when people start waking up and, and start realizing, you know what, wait a second, I, I'm actually probably in a reasonable level of agreement with somebody else about the substantive issue that's here, and maybe we can actually come up with a solution. I, as if I, the more that I look into some of this stuff, and the more that I'm also kind of aware of new things that are on the horizon, the more that I realize how limited their time is, the worlders are, how, how, mm-hmm. very, how, how quickly things can continue to change and how fast the paradigm is shifting, and they don't know what to do. I mean, the yeah. children of God, we're, we're okay. used to being flexible. We're used to flowing with God. We're used to being persecuted. My gosh, we're, we're used to being uh, gang stock. We're used Get to- off the bus. You know, no, no, not the back of the bus, Govinda. Off. Off, I know. In fact, don't ever get on another bus again. You well, know, not that- just that. They, they, they don't even stop. <laughs> Yeah. Or to get us off the bus, they want to throw us from the, the bus. They want to throw us from the yes, they throw us under the bus. <laughs> but that has been—I mean, it's amazing how that happens. But then all of a sudden, what I've noticed is that. But then God will open a door somewhere, and all of a sudden, there we are with an opportunity, and and other people get mad because we didn't go through their channels, uh, and we can't be controlled. At, but but God does not leave us forsaken. He's always, you know, you know, he knows what a lamb is, you know, he knows. And, and, you know, this is something I have to really reiterate because, you know, uh, the worlders don't want to admit what a lamb is. Okay. But they know what it is because a um, casual conversation I've had, I've tricked them many times into agreeing with me that lambs exist. See, they don't right? This is something that's very important because we, we haven't really talked about this aspect of it. But they don't believe that lambs exist, right? And if you go to them with your gang stalking story, you know, which is pretty much par for the course for anybody in this category of people that we're in, uh, they will tell you that you 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 need um, a psychiatric help, that you're seeing things that aren't there, that there's no such thing, right? When they say there's no such thing, that's how we know where they're lying because we know there is such a thing, and most people will admit. Oh, excuse me. Most people will admit. Thank you. Most people will admit that there is a problem with, you know, gang stalking or cause stalking, whether it be on a political level of people having the wrong political view in in a community. And so they 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 triangulate around them, try to hurt them, try to, you know, you know, you know, ruin their lives. Uh, Or if it gets on to a real supernatural level where it has to do with uh, it's like almost on the level of, of alien abduction where the people that you knew and then they're not who they you knew, and then they are again, and it's just very confusing and very frightening when you're you know. But the main there's one main component to the gang stalking and to the persecution, which is gang stalking, which is persecution. But the one main component of it is it's about you. It's coming at you, and it's coming at you from the future to the past to your present state, and it's designed to um, you know to. To, to, to bring you down, to, to, to wear you down, to wear you out, uh, to, to, to pummel you into the ground and, um, you know, to get you to the point where you're completely dysfunctional in society. Sometimes it's to humiliate or to shame you as being a real big loser or somebody that 
no matter how many times you try, you keep getting the shaft end of the stick rather than, you know, having any, you know, even a 50-50 level of success, you know, where sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. And they like to laugh at you and say that, hey, look, you've been up at bat here 15 times in a row. And you, look, you struck out 15 times. You're a real loser. You know, but that 15 times you struck out was all rigged, rigged by them. So there's that bullying, gang stalking thing that goes on that we've we've put up with all these years. Well, and, and, and Zeph, the, the thing is, is here's what what they sometimes as time is going on, they start to recognize they do that to their own hurt. See, here, here it is. We, we are ambassadors of Christ in the earth. We are because God has pulled us and called us as his own in the earth. So when we're here, we are representatives of his spirit, of, of, of light and truth. So when they do these things to us, who are the children of God, who yeah. love God and are here with an intention. Ultimately, we just want to bless. We want to help. We're we're happy to give it away if we need to. We just we're this, that's what we, we are. But when they do that, they actually do that against themselves. Right. They're actually doing that to their own hurt and their own destruction. I've had you know what? I've had some of these people that have messaged me over the years that I've crossed paths with for, you know, like in different places and they've tried to run their scenario, mm -hmm. and God just continued to keep moving me forward and doing whatever He does with me. And their thing hasn't worked, and it's fallen apart. And they will write me subsequently, sometimes if they're still around, right. and they'll write me and they'll be like, you know, I, I, they'll just say, look, my health has fallen apart, my business is there, whatever, whatever it may be. They will recognize that the point in time that everything started to collapse for them was in the middle of that entire scenario that they, that they tried to do. And, you know, a big, right. a big, and, and they will recognize it. And their thing is like, look, what do I need to do to try to make? And it's like, it's not me. It's not, it's, 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 See, that's it's the, the other mistake. That yeah. That's the other mistake they made. It, it's uh, it, you, you tell them about this and you, you know, you explain that the, the way the universe works, the way God works with it, you know, and in a lot of ways, I think, you know, we have people I mean, God puts people on the planet that other people are going to go pick on, let's say, or try to ruin their lives or do you know, play the game, you know, get the scenario, as you call it, going on. And then the Lord uses that incident to then, you know, pretty much take out the people that are doing it, right? He he tags them, and it seems like from that point on, things start going in a downward spiral for them over time. Mm -hmm. And we've seen this over and over again so many times that it's 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 it it would it would almost seem like it would be common sense or that would be in the the general consciousness of people would be aware that you know. You don't just go do anything you want here because there are consequences on the earth, right? They don't seem to understand that. So when they're killing cops or when they're gang stalking people or whatever they're doing out there, they're all these are all the worlders, right? The worlders kill cops. And not, nobody I know would kill a cop. You know what I mean? It just wouldn't. It wouldn't even enter into your, your conscience. It wouldn't even be an issue. It would never. It, it it would make no sense as it does now, indefinitely. But they do for whatever political reasons, because they're very short-sighted. They don't understand. Obama doesn't understand, for example, that by you know supporting all these causes, he's bringing the complete retribution back on himself and his cause of what he wants to do. He, by supporting you know, d you know, tyrants like Erdogan and all that, he's, bringing, he's showing that he's one of them too and bringing a, that, and bringing that um, condemnation back upon himself of being what goes around. They, they seem to think they can do whatever they want. They can go uh, do, do whatever illegal thing they want. They're above the law. And uh, they're in the club and nothing bad's ever going to happen. But the rule of the universe sticks. You will reap what you sow every time. Absolutely. And so when, when lambs are used to, as bait, which I guess that's a job. Hey, guys, did you know you're bait? You're used. The, the God, God's using you to get them to do something to you. And then he'll move you out of the way and then he'll deal with them. Now, I've seen God do that, too. Mm -hmm. The Lord will send us out in twos. Also, you know, people say, well, I don't have friends or whatever. It's like nobody does. They don't either. But I know the Lord sends us out in small groups like out in twos. You know, like you've got your friend Govinda there and I've got my friend and I'll, I got Trish. We go out in very small numbers all around the earth we exist 
And uh, I couldn't find a church to admit we existed, so I had to leave. I couldn't find anyone to, you know, if here and there, you know, believe it or not, there would be worlders who would admit what it is, right? Who I've had worlders tell me exactly what I know is true. You know, said, Zeph, everything you're saying is true. We just can't acknowledge it. We can't acknowledge it publicly. We can't even acknowledge it loudly at the dinner table or we would be in trouble. But yes, you're right. It exists. It's, well, he, here's, here's, here's the thing. As we continue to move forward and as we continue to move into uh, the, the larger paradigm of light and truth in this wave Amen. and in this move forward that's taking place, they don't have the option as time goes forward. I mean, basically, there, there's the, the decision is going to be forced on them of, you know, which way do you want to go? And none of it is going to be comfortable. See, none of the time that we're moving into is going to be comfortable for no. the worlders. Now, the ch- the children of God, we have gotten very comfortable with that which is uncomfortable. So we've we've gotten used to, um, and God has built strength <laughs> true. into us. That's true, but we no, we're, we're we're fine. We're good. I mean, like that's. The, we, I don't know about know, good, but well, yeah, I mean, it's not sense, great. It, it's no, not. It's it, not it like hurts. Uh, it hurts. I mean, it, it hurts. It's painful. Rejection but at the hurts. Same yeah. Time, we we've we've uh, we know. We know that God is going to provide for us. We know that God's going to protect us. We know that he's going to direct us. This is not a new thing. This is not our first workout. You know, this is not our first time going through any of this stuff. For a lot of these guys that are coming into this, the, the thing we're moving into, they, 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 the old system's not working. So they're all of a sudden saying, well, what do, we, what do they do? So, you know, as time goes on, the, this, the fastest way... And the healthiest way, and because I know occasionally some of these guys will check in with your show or, or with the, the with Faith Mix, the fastest way forward is you just get on God's page. You have to, to just completely give I, yourself over. I just if say He will take you. Just bless the Lamb. Yeah. In other words, all you got to do if you want in and just bless. You know who the lambs are in your community. Just bless one of them, and that will be a, a at least a beginning. You yeah. know, and, and so, so, you know, Zef, the, the thing, too, that I, I'm, I've been I've been contemplating some stuff and, and really just even in my, my own spirit, I'm kind of starting to see a few other things that they're that they're really concerned. The world is really concerned about. But but um, there's a few pieces that, you know, as time is going on, as they're losing that control of. There's a few pieces that are, are important parts that if we if we recognize it and we bring it into our own consciousness uh, as far as how we approach the situation that we're in, it's going to make a big difference in our ability to sort of rise above everything that's going on. OK, uh, I'll give you I'll give you a few of these ones that I've been I've been thinking about even this last couple of weeks. Um, <clears throat> so one one big piece that the world is very concerned about is attention. Who has it? And 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 unto what end? And and so that's a big part of what's going on with them right now is to keep that attention, to keep that focus, to keep and on a spiritual level, there's something that gets extracted and pulled out of the human soul based on the attention and the volition and where that that intent is. That was a big part of the issue that they had with Jesus when he was on the earth was the fact that look, the whole world had gone after him. That they were losing they were losing the, the the battle for for the minds of the people that were there, and you know what a big part of what they're trying to do with these things that are going on right now is to keep the attention and to keep the focus. What happens when they don't have that anymore? What happens when they don't they they're not able to control that perception? So attention is one big piece. Uh, you know, second one is um, is power. And the nature of power. You know, one thing I realized, you know, in, in recently I spent some time on, on uh, the Indian Reservation up in Pine Ridge and and, a, and just traveling and a few other things that, that happened to me um, with some other work stuff I was in. And just uh, simultaneously several things happening and God was just showing me some, some dynamics. But one thing I realized when it comes to a contract or a treaty or anything like that is that um, the nature of power is it's only the weaker person in an agreement that's ever expected to abide by the terms and the conditions of an agreement yeah. or a contract. Right. The person with the greater power will do whatever they feel like, yeah. and they will only enforce the contract when it's in their best, when it's in their interest. But the person that's the weaker one 
will they're the ones that are bound by the contract that they sign not the person with the greater power and the thing that the worlders get so scared about with the children of god is the is that greater is he that lives in us than he that lives in the world the Amen. greater power is in us but they don't want us to to act in that because if we act in that then 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 we move forward in something that they can't control so they have to control the mind so what one thing that takes place in this this process is is the need for them to exert and to try to exert certain types of, of power dynamics to try to keep people, you know, in in a in in and to push them in a particular way. But uh, you know, for for the children of God, when we've realized the the nature of what what we're in and what we're surrounded by, then we can also come out from them. I mean, we had to have the greater power. Um, move us out now. The way that the world kind of hopes is they hope that 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 um, that the, in the exercising of power, that they might have a benevolent person or a benevolent leader that's at the top of that food chain that 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 will do things in their best interest, and that's kind of their hope. But see, even even the thing that that we have with God is for us mm-hmm. when god says something he does it so he even though he has he can he can do whatever he feels like but he puts things in place and he allows certain things to operate it to happen he is exalted his word even above his name when god says something and he speaks and he he goes into a situation he is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do so he's not like the worlders where they basically just will change the dynamic whenever they feel like it to whatever is their interest so but when when, and certain things that God's spoken about us is going to happen. Certain things that God is, is happening even right now. Certain things about what God has put in us is taking place right now. So, so as we move forward in that, the greater power is in us, and that actually trumps the situation that, that, that we're in. They, they cannot control us because we cannot be controlled because we, we've been set free. We're free will agents. So that's the second one. Third one that God's been kind of showing me some things about is the nature of detachment while we're here in the world. Uh, and scripturally, that's the, that we're in the world, but we're not of the world. Yeah, John so 17. In, and, and so we're here. And you know something, too, is that so often, I, if, if for my own life, what's happened is I can oftentimes see a situation very clearly for other people. And, or I can. I'm a great consultant, and I'm 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 good at I'm good at certain things. God's given me that skill set. But when it's somehow when it's come down to my own personal life, I may have struggled to see certain things because, and sometimes it's because I'm in that situation. And something that God is even showing me about the time that we're living in right now is the need, the nature to to shift into another way of. Of understanding the situation we're in. See, we're 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 seated in heavenly places. We are spiritually. We already know where we are. We're we're eight. We're we're here in a physical body in order to be involved in this paradigm. But this is not our eternal reality by any sense. No. And so, being able to be here, to be in it, but not of it, and to relate to the situation in a particular way is going to do so much more. For our our mental, our mindset, our our health and well being, and God will be able to use us much more in this situation when when we're able to um, to kind of step a little bit. We're here, we're in it, but we're not of it because and God that, is going to use us and flow through us in this situation in powerful ways. And then the you know the kind of the fourth one, and this is the last one that I was that was there with me even in these last few days is praise. You know, this is something where, you know, is where I've, you know, not move forward in this as strongly as I could have and I should have, but I'm remembering and understanding this, the power of this, but is, is um, just praising God as worshiping God while we're in the middle of this whole thing, because we have the victory. We know the one that we've served. We won't, we will not follow another. And in our praise and in our worship of God and God is there, God inhabits the praises of his people. So as we are moving forward in that, uh, even in this time, in the middle of a, of a difficult time by by natural situations, but our situation and our circumstance is not dictated by our external environment. And when God will, when His praises flow through us, that that's 
the, the whole thing changes. I mean, I, I was uh, reading a story the other day of this little kid. He's a 10 year old kid, I think. And some guy had grabbed him off the front lawn and was <laughs> trying to kidnap him and traffic him. And, <clears throat> And this little kid just started singing worship songs in the car with this kidnapper. And this kidnapper, because the kidnapper told this kid, um, you know, I don't want to hear a word out of you. So he just started singing. And he just started singing praise and worship songs in this car. And he wouldn't shut up. And the kidnapper started cursing and just losing it. But this kid just kept praising God and singing, uh, singing praises to God for three hours until the point that this the kidnapper couldn't take it. And he just kicked him out of the car into somebody's lawn and drove away. Now, you know, I mean, what what did that do? This it there, sounds there, like Paul in in prison. You know, he did the same thing. <laughs> James I, I, broke. I was just, I was, I was reading that story. I was so encouraged by that, and just seeing that too. Mm -hmm. That just those principles are there, and there's a child that's moving forward in the power of God. There's a child that is moving forward and understands part of that solution that we need to move forward in right now. See, the thing is, when we move forward with boldness, when we move forward with confidence, when we move forward with the assurance that we have in Christ Jesus, while the worlders are melting down, this is what God wants us to also be doing right now while we're here as witnesses and ambassadors of the truth. We're not in the same situation that they're in. We're not. No, we, we're, we're, we're not in, in, invested in it. We, we know that this is temporary. You know, we, we've always known that. And all last month, the Lord had me detaching from worry, right? Worry, worry is your litmus test. If you want to know if you're too attached to things, my question to you would be this. Do you worry? And you go, yeah, Z, I worry every night. Well, okay, I've had this problem too. And, you know, by detaching from material things, from the material world, you worry less. And so, and here's Trish. Trish is, we got to get on with it, right? Govinda's volume, huh? It's interesting. Here he's loud. Oh, it is. Okay, go ahead, Govin. I'll turn mine down. Okay. okay. How is it now, Trish? How do I sound now, Trish? <laughs> it is delay. There is a delay. Yeah? She's she's way across the the house okay. to another area because because otherwise we could hear it would be feeding yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I didn't realize. You know, funny. It's on the mixer. You're. Well, that should have taken care of it. Well, let's see what she says. Okay. <clears throat> huh? So, she right, says, I'll... well, I wish you would have told me that about an hour ago. <laughs> okay. Well, it's, 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 uh, I, yeah. So, so the, so, but the, the, the kind of those four points, since, since maybe they got, uh, with the volume was a little lower before attention power detachment praise those are the four things that you know while we're riding the wave right now those are some things just to keep keep in mind is is mm -hmm. well what we have to do is detach from worry uh mm -hmm. d you know the lord jesus gave a very very strong sermon about that and, you know, made several examples, including, you know, look at the birds, look at the lilies of the field. And they're not worrying, right? They're, they're in bloom every year. And uh, they, don't, uh, they don't have to gather into barns. They're not worried about their businesses. They're not worried about their worldly things. They just are beautiful. Mm -hmm. They just are alive and they have everything they need. So your father in heaven, you know, knows you need things more than these and he knows what you need before you even have to ask it. So instead of having this, you know, I mean, another way you know you're worrying, you know, you're attached to, to the material world, is when every time you pray to God, you're begging him for stuff. Stuff you don't have. And, <coughs> and you know, that can start becoming a problem if every time you pray, instead of praising the Lord, instead of, instead of um, you know, having variety in your prayer, it's, well, I really need this and I haven't gotten it. And Lord, could you make sure that paycheck comes in on time? You know, those kinds of things. And I know where people have gotten really caught up in repetition of those prayers. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Every it's every time they're praying, they're 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 having it's it's this is going wrong, and then my Medicare thing isn't going to come through, and then I need this over here, and I need that over there, and and it's I I feel like saying to everyone right now, the Lord knows what we need. Mm-hmm. He knows we need the check. He knows we need the Medicare thing to come through. He knows we need the doctor approval. I, now people are caught up in the healthcare system. I feel sorry for them because they're starting to be denied services which we all said was going to happen if you let this Obamacare go through. Uh, so so they're they're praying but they're they're begging for more Medicare and you know and to not be kicked out of programs they're in for prescription drugs or for checkups or whatever that uh and these are not being covered anymore. I I am you know there's a lot of things like that if you're attached to the material world. I mean that's just one thing, the medical thing. But if you're attached mm-hmm. to things in this yeah. world, there's a lot that's going to go wrong in the next few years because there's there's as we're coming through this as we're coming to the end of the age which is what this is it there's going to be a you know some rough bumps in the road and one of those will be your your comfort level may not be there the way it was for the last 10 years let's say so that's going to be a real test of faith yeah and 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 you know i i think zeph one one thing that's happened is for those that have been tracking with the lord because i know sometimes this thing comes up as well when people when people have been going with God, and they sort of sometimes wonder, okay, well, what about me, Lord? Why why have they had to go through all these difficulties and all these tests? Listen, you, for those of you that are out there that have wondered about the struggles that you've gone through, you've been prepared. You've been prepared for the times you're now in. You this is this is you know how to to go through. You know how to trust God. You've learned the promises of God that they're true and that they that He's going to follow through. I, I mean, yeah. th- as if every word that Christ Jesus spoke when He was on the earth, it wasn't for some window that's past. It's it's relevant for everything we're in right now. So the promises of God are there, are true, and we can we can go forward with them. Yeah. So th- those are what we're living in and moving forward in right now. And so so this is where the word becomes real and our reality and what we're moving in at this stage is is it's it's, it's what we were destined to do and the witness we were destined to have while we're here in the earth right now. So um I, I know we got to pray but it's just it's I'm excited because of uh <clears throat> of the fact that I see God's hand uh, on all of that's going on right now, I know that it's a turbulent time, and I just want to encourage people to 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 exercise the things that you have that God's put in you because the greater powers in us. When we pray, things happen. I mean, Zeph, you you know when we started uh, praying this twenty on twenty, mm-hmm. I mean, where the world was at that time, and and look at all the things that have happened and everything that's been it's, stirred it is, up. That is truly amazing. I mean, that's. Uh... You know, very unexpected that there would be that much upheaval and that much change. And if you try try to sit back to the show, back to where we, you know, you started the initiative, but back to this initiative, I would say that everything that needed to be brought into the light has been. Yeah, I I, mean, and this is this is just this is just a a year and change. I mean, we still got some time. So, so I mean, it's the, the 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 thing is, is we know that God can can change everything in an instant. Right. Everything could, we could wake up tomorrow, and all this could be done. Exactly. But God, but God has His way of doing things. So what we are doing when we come together and when we pray, is we are we are like that persistent widow coming before the just judge. But in the, in that case, yeah. it wasn't a just judge. But we're coming before God, and we're saying, okay, before His throne, with the ever increasing number of people every every month True. and we are coming back before god and we are saying god grant us justice Gr- bring your kingdom your kingdom come your will be done we are bringing Amen. something before the very throne of god and we're saying lord god this flies directly in the face of the very thing that you desired to set up and establish on the earth. So we are bringing this here, and we know that the greater power is in you. We are yielding ourselves to that greater power, and we are praying for the establishment and and the the rule and the reign of of Christ Jesus Amen. over all of these it. things, and we're 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 te- we're asking God to to remove the usurpers, to remove the parasites, yes. to get rid of the, the 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 these ticks and these little dark minions and these dark workers. They're I ticks. Mean, all of the- <laughs> they're ticks. I love it. They're they're blood suckers. You know. 
So and, yeah, so and, some and, li- and, literally, literally bloodsuckers as well. So so yeah, so so we we've been we've been going through this, and and as we've prayed, everybody that's been here. I mean, there's enough of a record now, Zeph, for people to go back that they can know for themselves that God is with us, that God has been working through us, that these shows, these are not just the. That, that whether it's uh, whether it's the podcasts that you put out, the the podcasts mm-hmm. that we put out on Faith Mix, whether it's the joint things that we all do together, whatever it may be, God has been in this stuff one hundred percent from the very start, Amen. and yes. and we and people see and know that, and and so now here it is. Why would God do this? Because He cares about His creation, and Absolutely. He's put these voices out there so that those that are also on the way. To, to perishing in their own destruction, that they too have a chance for they and their households to be saved. But it's not going to come on their terms. They're not. It's not going to happen where they can manipulate God. No, they come under His lordship, and they they directly come before the King of Kings, and they bow their yeah. knee to the King and they submit to His rule. Or otherwise, hey, when this thing comes through, and it's coming, and it's already coming, but when it continues, it's. Like we've said before, too, people are having trouble right now. It is only going to increase, and it's only going to amp up even more. So as as we're moving forward in these things, in this time, either repent or perish. That's really the only options they have. It's funny. You know, it, it's so simple when you think about it. It's it's such common sense. It's like when, when the world offers you a... Uh, you know their 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 version of the way out, and you have to be corrupted to be on the path. You know there's something wrong with that, right? From from de- from the get go, what you're saying is, you know, the world's too hard, so I give up, and and that's understandable because you may not know the Lord, you don't know what's really going on, so you just take the first deal you get, let's say. And the Lord wants to make a way for all of those people, and we've been here for those people. You know, th- these are our prodigal sons and daughters and brothers and sisters who are out there who did it the world's way because that's what was offered. That's common. That it was the common sense of that day. Now they're having second thoughts. We want to be a big light. We want to be a big magnet for you. We want to draw you like a magnet to the source of your creation, to the source of your life anyway, which is the Lord God almighty. That is not, you know, this is not church here. We're not putting the yoke of rules on you we're not we're not judging you not berating you we're not you know we very much have this kind of there but for the grace of god go i think going on and you you can see that you you feel that you experience that and no we're not interfaith either like i'm okay you're okay we're not doing that either you know there's one way in and and it's the lord's way or no way and you know we all submit to that like ovinda was saying yes we agree to go by you know, uh, it's funny that we have. To, I've got to mention Woody Allen, but he did say something very profound. You know, say what you will about him, but he said that uh, if you want to make God laugh, tell him your plans. Oh, I know. <laughs> now that that's one of the most brilliant statements ever about God. That is absolutely true. If mm-hmm. if it, 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 we have to, you know, leave our plans, leave our egos, leave all that at the door. But here's the good news. The good news is all the yoke of worry. The yoke of trying to be controlling the world, not getting hurt in the world, living in fear, uh, being in a group think, being in the hive mind, being in all, all of, you know, just every which way, not being free. You know, you may have material things, but you're, but you're bound in by them all because if you step out of line, those things can be taken away from you in a, in a second. Well, welcome to agape love. You know, this is not a conditional love. This is absolutely unconditional love. And, and, you know, the Lord Jesus, the blood of Christ sets us free. That blood is the payment and the only thing that will pay for our souls to be redeemed. That's the only payment that God, uh, that can, can, that would work with God. The only payment that Satan agrees is the payment because we're actually being bought. You know, Satan believes he owns us, right? So we have to go pay the devil off. And that's what, uh, the crucifixion of Christ is. I mean, what do you think it is? It's a contractual arrangement that if we truly believe in, in, in the Lord Jesus, if we truly believe in God, then God will make a way and has made a way. We already have the victory at the cross and we've been paid for. Mm-hmm. We've been redeemed already. We have the victory. The cross is the victory. And so 
we have that victory and we have the freedom, even though it's been difficult for many of us to live in that freedom. Okay, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. None of us is doing that so well that you go, oh, my God, they all look like Gandhi or something. You know, no, no, people have their struggles. And I, I, we have a lot of brothers and sisters who've been struggling with uh, things like um, MK Ultra type of stuff, gang stalking, kidnapping, abductions, <clears throat> rewiring certain kinds of programming. You know, uh, they've been tied to the heavy duty witchcraft, to the big stuff, you know. Uh, that that where they talk about things like Mother of Darkness programming and then there's Star Wars programming and Wizard of Oz programming and all this and they're struggling with that stuff. I mean, they, these are people that you might have thought, well, they have no chance of ever escaping. They do, but mm -hmm. you can't expect the people in that category to suddenly get up and fly. You know what I mean? They're going to have to keep sure. battling through it and we need to be compassionate about that and understand their struggles. The, the reason they don't get a lot of understanding and sympathy out there, which they should get, is because people just think they're crazy mm -hmm. when they mention what's happened. I'm one guy that I, I remember came around. And he was he lives in another country. I think he lives in Thailand and he's an American guy that's a transplanted expatriate in Thailand. And it doesn't really matter where he lives, but there's there's kind of a language barrier, you know, barrier there. Anyway, he goes to the police station, he does a video of this, and he, he shows people driving by and mocking him, driving by and saying things to him, driving by and, you know, he's, he's showing this conspiracy best he can with video, that he shows himself talking to the cops, and the cops are telling him that it's in his own head, and he gets all this on tape, you know, mm -hmm. and he's not making progress with it because he really needs the Lord to do that, you know, I mean, I don't know what his status is now because that could all all change as well. But mm -hmm. those are really tough, scary binds that, that people get into. And usually it's because, okay, those kind of gang stalking things is always because you're not with the status quo. You're not with the uh, official group. You're not in the hive mind. Therefore, you're a target. Now, just put it that way. But it's the best place to be. And we mm -hmm. also have lots of brothers and sisters who don't know anything about the Lord or the, the Bible. Whether they don't know, they're they're working in it. You know, God's working with them, and but they are your future. And I won't even say future. They're brothers and sisters you have out there that are that are. You know, we're all kind of like prodigal sons coming home, prodigal daughters coming home. And um, so we're, what we're trying to do here is is really, you know, I mean, we're here we're here kind of like almost a self help thing. We're trying to get up to speed. So that, okay, I'm getting the nod from the mean producer here. I'm, get, I'm getting, I'm getting that look. Okay, I understand you. She's got her hands clasped and showing me the prayer sign. Gotcha, yes. gotcha, uh, hair producer. Yes, ma'am. 